Hello friends, this video on reproduction in plants part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us look at the third method of artificial vegetative propagation which is grafting. So let's see what grafting is. So this is also going to be very interesting because it, this can actually mix and match two different plants. So stems cut from two different plants attached to grow as a single plant. So this is the example which I was giving you initially while I introduced artificial vegetative propagation. So if you want your desired characters, if you want certain characters from plant 1 and certain characters from plant 2, what you can do is cut a stem from plant 1, cut a stem from plant 2 and then attach them together and they both will grow together as one plant. So that this new plant will have certain traits of plant 1 and it will have certain traits from plant 2. So let us see how exactly this happens. So let us say these are the two parts which are taken from two different plants. So this is the stem from one plant, this is the stem from another plant. So this part which is taken from one plant is called schyre. And this part which is taken from another plant that is called stalk and it provides water and minerals to the plant. So this part is responsible to provide water and minerals to the plant. So this stalk and scion, they together will make a new plant. So how do we make this? So what we do is the scion and the stalk, they are like, I mean you see the way they have been cut. So if scion is cut in this way, stalk is cut in this way. So that when you put them together, no gap is left between them. Now it is very important to make sure that scion and stalk should exactly fit each other leaving no gap. And that is why a slant cut is preferred. So that is why you have a slant cut here. So this slant cut which actually helps in better fitting of sky and stock. Now when both of them are fitted together, so you just wind it up with uh, some something, maybe a rope or something, so that it is like one structure now. So it is like one single stem now. And then when this plant grows, it will have certain properties of plant 1 and certain properties of plant 2. In fact, I will give you an interesting example where grafting is used. Now, lemon and orange, these are two different things. So take this example of lemon and orange. Do you think that they are exactly identical to each other? Not really. However, both of them are citrus fruits, but they are different from each other. Now, what makes them different? Now, both of them are obtained from one plant with two different scions on the same stalk. So the stalk is same for both lemon and orange. That is why they have certain similarities. But the scions are different in both of them which makes them different from each other. So this is how you can get many new varieties of plants with new varieties of flowers, with new traits of fruits, with new traits of vegetables. So this method can actually help to improve the quality of certain plants because you know the choice is under our control. So if we feel that okay certain fruit is uh, rich in iron, vitamins, minerals and there is some other fruit which is rich in the water content and we want all of these traits in one single plant. What we can do is we can take scion from one and the stock from another and then do this process of grafting. So grafting can actually help us to innovate to get better plants which are nutritionally better or uh, which are more healthy for us. And as I said, all these methods are these days exploited by farmers for, for not only farmers, farmers, gardeners or other uh, people for their benefit. So sometimes, sometimes the uh, it's a, it, it becomes disadvantageous as well because people might also try to mix and match some low quality plants with some good quality plants so which might also decrease or which might also you know retard the quality of certain plants so these are the methods by which vegetative propagation can be done artificially so by now we have discussed a lot of methods by which asexual reproduction take place so if you look at it in all these methods what did we see we do not require two parents everywhere we just require one parent so one parent plant was able to give rise to new plants in all the artificial as well as natural vegetative propagation even in methods like fission budding fragmentation everywhere there was just one parent who was involved 
Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.